All right, so flex cut tools, who are they for and why do I like them? So these tools are in my mind designed for beginners to intermediate whittling and wood carvers. They make good quality tools for a decent price. They're not overly expensive, but they're not on the cheap end too. So it, I feel like they're kind of like in that intermediate uh, middle ground between your high end tools and your basic super uh, cheap starter stuff. These tools will get you started and carry you on further into the, the hobby itself it, without you feeling like you have to replace the tools with nicer quality tools. So that, that's a great little feature for a lot of you who are just wanting to get started. All right, so let's go over why I actually like these tools here. Um, one of the things that I really like as FlexCut as a brand is they have a widespread availability of different types of tools. So you're gonna have like your basic uh, bench knives and carving knives that uh, you're gonna see here um, in a variety of different shapes and some with different handle designs as well. Not only that, they sell their nice Sloyd knives, like this is a stub Sloyd. They also sell the regular Sloyd, which is a little bit longer, as well as these really cool palm tools, um, which they just fit in your hand really nicely for doing small, intricate, detailed work, as well as like full on chis chisels that you can smack with a mallet and do um, larger carvings. So they cover everything you're gonna need for your basic wood carving uh, needs for just about any person, really. Another thing too is they are widely available almost everywhere. Every, almost every single wood carving shop I see has flex cut tools available uh, uh, in their store inventory. Another thing I really like is their steel quality. Uh, they use high carbon steel which is hardened to about a 59 to 61 Rockwell hardness, which is that sweet spot where you want all your wood carving uh, tools to be. Um, this way it's not too soft to the point where you um, lose your edge retention too quickly. It's also not too hard where it's not too terribly brittle and risks chipping uh, the blade edge when you're actually using them. And another thing I really like about their tools is they're just comfortable to hold for long term. They have a nice little swell at the front so you can easily hold on to the tool and provide a lot of power and strength um, while carving and you can still control it very easily. Uh, they come in different shapes like um, this one's almost like a, a Sloyd style handle shape. You can see with the Sloyd handle, it's a little bit more oval. It just fits in the palm of your hand very nicely. Um, even their palm tools, they just seem like they fit in the palm of my hand so nicely and so comfortably. Uh, I don't feel like that my hand is getting worn out by just holding on to them. And then they have the, their detail knives with these little, um, with a little bit more of a different shape to them where you can re really just come in here and pinch in there and really get some good detail work and control that tip both comfortably and accurately. Another cool thing I really like uh, is the actual thinness of their blade. It's It's got a good uh, thickness to it to the point where it's not so thin that um, you risk breaking it too easily, but it's also not so thick that it makes it harder to actually push through the wood. So let's uh, let's take this one for example. This is a Beavercraft knife, which is another good uh, decent option for beginners. Noted this is a, no, these knives are notably cheaper than the flex cut uh, knives, but you can see it's about half the width of the Beavercraft knife itself. So the flex cut tools have that have a good thinness to them that allow you to just push the knife through the wood very easily uh, with less resistance than some of your cheaper options. Another thing I really like is they do sell these tools and kits to help you save a little bit of money. Like you can see here I have, um, this is the wide palm kit. I have a beginner's palm kit. I got some chisel kits. This is their palm and knife set, which by the way, if you're getting started, this is a kit you want to look at right here. It, it has two different knives that are great for cutting through wood, like basswood. And then you can also get these little um, palm tools along with it. So you get a, a basic uh, scoop and then you get a V gouge in there as well. Uh, great for adding little details. Um, also, with the uh, this doesn't come with the kit, but there are like little freebie options in 
all the kit um, little back panel thing. So whenever you, if you buy a kit, make sure you do not throw out like the back, the little backer piece. You open it up like a little folder here and there are like rebates in here for different things. Um, I know for mine, when I actually purchased this one, uh, it had a free mail-in offer for the rolling uh, tool organizer here. So always check those little, um, little uh, backers on the packaging. You make sure you, you don't, uh, that way you don't make sure you don't miss out on any cool offers or anything like that. But so this one, it just folds over, it has string, you can uh, tie it up. Now, if you're finding the video helpful, please hit that like button. It helps me know that I'm doing a good job here and also helps spread it out to other people. All right, so let's go over some of the things that I wasn't too terribly fond of because not every tool is perfect. And um, for each person, it's probably gonna, gonna vary it uh, themselves. But I'm gonna go over some of the things that I've both experienced and heard from other people here. Now, the first one is just me being a little bit nitpicky. Now, these are mass-produced tools. That's how they're able to uh, make so many of them and have a consistent quality and send them all over the world. Um, I do believe that these, uh, the tool, uh, the blades and whatnot, even for the palm tools, I believe they're either uh, cut out of sheets or pressed, uh, pressed out of sheets. So there are some minor blemishes from the machining process. Sometimes I find some of the tools where it has like a little bit of a buildup on one side. It's easy enough to fix. Just take like some sandpaper to the back of the knife and make it more comfortable. That's just me being nitpicky. Uh, it won't affect how it cuts. It's not gonna affect the way that the tool actually cuts or is used. I just notice it. it it's kind of something that just like catches my eye every now and then, but it's nothing bad at all. Another thing too that uh, I've noticed as well as other people noticed, uh, you notice that the palm tools, and let me grab one of the chisels too, and the chisels are a little bit on the thinner side. This does allow the metal to have a tendency to flex a little bit while you're using it. I know some people don't like that. I feel like you'll notice it if you're applying pressure at a, the wrong angle or if you're carving really hard wood. Uh, really, I, I don't find it to be a problem. Even the bigger ones have a minor amount of flex to them, um, but it's, it's not anything that will stop me from actually doing any sort of carving. Uh, it's still rigid, more than rigid enough to actually do uh, most of the cuts that I need. And it doesn't, again, it, it doesn't affect me at all. So I know some people don't like it. Um, for me, it doesn't bother me at all. Now, I've also heard uh, uh, reports of other people where they say that their edges come in dull or chipped or... Uh, the tool is damaged, but I feel like I've heard this from more from international users of the tools. These are made in the United States, so if, for me here, I've purchased like well over a thousand five hundred dollars worth of flex cut tools. I have not found any one of them that came damaged or dull or anything like that. Like all of them have come razor sharp right out of the packaging, no problems whatsoever. All right, another thing too, um, this is more or less a warning for you guys that are using the detail knives. The tips of these knives are very thin and since the steel is hardened, um, that makes the steel a bit more brittle. And as you can see here, you can easily break them if you put them in the, uh, if you put the wrong forces on there. So don't stick them in a piece of wood and try to pry something out. That's not how the, these blades are designed to actually be used. You want to go um, actually just carve straight with them. You don't want to twist it or anything like that. These tools are not designed to do that. They're designed to slice off wood. If you're going to be doing any sort of weird, um, like uh, weird forces or torquing, you're going to want to use a thicker blade like a Sloyd knife. Like I'll just use this one as an example. You can see the Sloyd knife has a massive difference in thickness in your regular knives. These knives are designed to take off a ton of wood, um, like mostly more stubborn wood. Uh, so a Sloyd knife is a great um, option to have with you. Definitely don't use the thinner blades. Like if you do something with this little itty bitty uh, detail pelican knife, uh, you'll easily snap it. So this is designed to slice um, in one direction without twisting. Um, if you're gonna be making strange cuts, 
just put, pick up like a, a gouger, a V tool or something like that. That'll allow you more option for actually doing any sort of uh, shapes and whatnot. The final thing that I wasn't too terribly fond of was the lacquered handles. Um, while it's the, having the wood finish on there like this um, is great for sealing the wood and protecting it from any stains, anything like that, but um, the problem comes when you've been using it for a while or if you're using it in hotter conditions. Like me here in Florida, I'm carving here in my shop, my hands get sweaty. They have a tendency to uh, slip in my hands if I'm using a very slick uh, handled knife. That's not the greatest. I mean, it's, I'm not telling you it's like, oh, it's going to slip and slide in your hand no matter what, and it's going to go, and it's not going to go flying out of your hand. Um, just keep that in mind. I see that some people actually sand down their tools a little bit, um, the handles a little bit, so that you can actually get some of the um, grip from the natural wood. Like the Sloyd knives, I believe they're oil finished instead of lacquered. So it has a nice amount of grip to the wood itself and it doesn't slide around whenever I'm actually using it. Um, but that again, that's kind of something I, I didn't like too much. It's easily fixable and it's not a bad issue. It's not going to go slipping out of your hand too terribly easy. All right, so my overall impressions of the tools, I really like them. I have no problems with them myself. I've purchased a bunch of them and never had any of them that just look bad or um, don't cut very well. I do find that these are meant more for beginners and intermediate wood carvers. If you're going to be doing like super large carvings, uh, you're obviously want to get the the chisel tools, they're designed to take off more wood. The smaller tools are designed for like small projects. For example, the two palm tools here, I just use those tools only to make this little elephant here. Um, they're not, I don't think that they're meant for like a massive uh, wood carving project, but good small like handheld um, carving uh, carvings for the these kind of tools right here. The bigger ones, yeah, you can use those for larger wood carvings. And like I said before, um, these tools are easily accessed. I find them everywhere. Um, they're not overly expensive. I find them to be in the middle uh, price range, uh, especially here in the States. Uh, I know it, it can be a little bit more expensive uh, outside the country. I, I do have a hard time trying to find something um, that works as well as these do for the, the price. Not only that, they have a wide selection of tools. Like this is just a small sample of what they actually have. They have a whole bunch of different options. They have more tool options like hook knives. Um, they have um, more chisels. They, they have a whole bunch of tools, guys. Seriously, they, they can cover nearly any realm of wood carving. Not only that, they do have like pocket knives as well, which are great for those of you who are carving on the go. I actually made a full on video of all the flex cut carving pocket knives and uh, carving tools. I'll have that video uh, right here on the screen for you or link below. Um, go ahead and check that out uh, just in case you want to pick up one of these in addition to any of the other flex cut tools. Thanks for watching guys and have yourself a good one.